have a fast and furious start. Carolina Bekele Grovdal was having an amazing season following that gold medal in Dublin. Broke a long standing Norwegian 5,000 meter record. Ingrid Christensen had held that for 36 years. Bekele Grovdal ran 1431 at the Oslo Diamond League and then it all started to unravel ever so slightly. A good eighth place at the World Championships and then a really debilitating back injury into the European Championships in Munich. Couldn't give a good representation of herself. By all accounts, fully recovered now around a road race coming into this competition, 30 seconds faster than she did last year. So Bekele Grovdale back in her top form. But you look at the other athletes around her that have improved. If Yasmin Chan brings her A game today, that's, that's always turned into a gold medal historically. And Constanza Klosterhalfen with that brilliant half marathon has just propelled herself uh, up the kind of expectations this season as well. Yeah, Klosterhalfen with that 65 minute half has enormous strength. We know that. I wonder how she will cope though with the, the, uh, with the hills. She, we all know she's very frail of build, but her power to weight ratio is quite superb. I have been impressed though with uh, Jessica Warner Judd, the way she has sort of transferred from being a, a sub two minute 800 meter runner as a teenager to being a world class distance runner. It's an unusual journey. Led Britain to team golds at the uh, European Championships, cross country championships last year in Dublin and has moved up a notch, I think, this last year or so. You know, she's 27, uh, Jessica Warner Judd. She's improving year on year, nice and steadily. And of course, the key to building fitness, Hannah, you know, is to keep avoiding injuries. If you can build season upon season of training and racing and steer clear of injuries, then that fitness accumulates. It's absolutely key. Many experienced athletes will tell you that. It's all very well to run along from season to season and pick up regular niggles, but it's much harder to build your overall fitness if that's the profile. And you need that cumulative years after years of training uh, to realize your full potential. And you said it in, in some of the other races when we had uh, Maria Ferrero beat Ines Fitzgerald, the Spanish woman. You know, she has two or three years of training uh, on the younger athlete. And uh, we've seen that in some of these age group championships. Um, but are those consecutive years back to back are very important and I think that's what Constanza Klosterhaufen has, has managed to get herself over the last few years. She picked up a bronze in 2019 at the World Champs and that almost seemed uh, it was going to be a springboard uh, into those senior ranks and she stalled slightly. Maybe it was to do with the pandemic. It was tricky conditions for everybody. But that gold medal in Munich in front of a home crowd for Constanza Klosterhaufen, that was a really for me a major turning point in her career she was so dominant in that race and you could see the emotion when she took that gold medal well i think it was great for european athletics for global athletics that germany had a major championship success you know they topped the medal table they had a wonderful week's athletics at those european championships in munich and it was important for the sport within the european theater that germany came back strongly so I, while i wanted britain to top the medal table there and they got beaten by germany on the last evening because of the relays uh Germany, yeah, a real force once again. Grovdal running aggressively, running with real confidence here, it seems, the defending champion. At 32, she has loads of experience, Hannah. She will know her own abilities and her body well. So she, this will not be her going out too hard and being extravagant. No, I, and I still think there's an advantage to, to being in the lead down that hill. Um, and, and how much that plays into the rest of the lap, I'm not quite sure. But, you know, if you were hanging back and then sprinting through to get yourself a good view at that downhill, um, that might be kind of expending energy unnecessarily. Uh, Carolina Gr Bekele Grovdale has been training in Flagstaff at altitude, so she's done that altitude training stint uh, that so many of our, our senior athletes like to employ. Let's an early look at the team standings. We did think that Germany would have a t uh, chance at a gold medal here. And they're packing well at the moment in the lead with just 24 points. They've got the likes of Hannah Klein, Miriam Datka to back up Carolina Cl uh, Constanza Klosterhalf. And I hadn't seen Alina Ray, but she does often go off more conservatively and then you know, move, to, move through tremendously well. Well, Grovdahl just feeling her way around there. Chan beginning to move to the fore in second place there to the right of picture in the red of Turkey. Yasmin Chan. Of course, uh, not to be confused with the Turkish-born Yasmin Chan Asyan, who was the world junior mountain running champion back in 2010. But uh, Chan 
so experienced. She could be the biggest threat to Grovdal here. I am fascinated to see how Kloster Halvan copes with the hill, I have to say, and the uh, four big laps. Germans, though, clearly up for this if they're leading the team race at the moment from Great Britain in these early stages. Grovdal again just moving herself to the fore. I think and you look at uh, Norway as a nation, I, I said it in some of the junior races, I watched that Nordic cross country uh, chat, just some clips at the end of it. It was, for, it was horrible, it was hilly, it was muddy, it was everything. And I think if you grow up racing in conditions like that, I mean, Grovdale now, she does a lot of stuff on the roads uh, and the track and she's very good, but if you're, you're bread and butter, what you've grown up on um, is stuff like this, that maybe you'd be rubbing your hands at this point going, ah, oh, I fancy my chances. That's, that's nothing compared with what, what I had to do as a junior. Um, so she does look keen to kind of push the pace on. That's the second of their small laps, so not all the way up to the top. And you can see the ground's just starting to cut up a bit. It's getting a little bit muddier. Cluster Halfen and Jess Warner Judd looking okay down that hill. Great packing from the German team. Oh, just rushing up behind Cluster Halfen there. There's Alina Ray, not quite in the scoring at the moment. I think we've got four German yellow vests. I might be including Mengstab in that. No, you have got four, four German vests up there. But also Selma Witt to 30 of Israel. She slotted herself in there really well. Well, it is pretty fast and furious at the front. They've gone through two laps in 6.28. There it is. Grovdal to Ferry and Warner Judd. Costa Health and Klein of Germany. Look at this. Grant Statka. Fabulous packing from the Germans. Four in ten. So, what about 25, 26 athletes within 10 seconds of the leaders? There's a, that's a big old bunch behind. You can see Markov back there as well in British Fest, former European Indoor 3000 metres champion. She's got a bit of running to do just yet to get back on terms. But of course, the pace is not going to slow at the front now. Chan has hit the front for the first time. And if you want to get up to these athletes and you're back there in the teens, you're going to have to put in pretty significant acceleration. So the, the pattern of the race, if you're outside the top 10, can become a little bit <laughs> sort of imposed upon you. You know, if you don't stay up there in the early stages, I think you said this earlier, Hannah, mm -hmm. you need to run aggressive in the opening lap in races of this calibre. Because if you're not there, if you're not in the mix early on, it's very hard to be in the mix uh, later on because you're going to have to run so much quicker than the leading group to get up with them. And I think as, as I look back through their gr that group, I'm seeing names. I mean, Mark Oates is one. She's, she's very, very good. She struggled on a, this course I keep talking about in Britain that I think was similar. Mark Oates struggled there, but she's, she's very far back on that pack. Um, and Alina Ray is as well. We saw Alina Ray move through really well in Dublin, but the course was very different. It was wide. There were a few gentle rises, but it wasn't like this. So to have to put in the effort to haul yourself up this field at this point it is really hard going I think you're better off being here um, and relaxing into the hill then for the uh, third time but this time they will make the full climb they've completed two small laps eight and a half minutes on the clock Chan from Grovdal Kloster Helfen is there as well Teferi Moving well into third place. Je Judd there, just beginning. Warner Judd just beginning to lose a bit of a lose a bit of ground on that leading quartet. She needs to really work up this hill to go with them. Kloster Halfen there in fourth place in the yellow left of picture. Wonder how she'll cope with this hill. And as you said, certainly Grovdal should be comfortable with these hills. They breed them tough in Norway. Comes with the climate. Ooh, Chan struggling there. A little slip, I think. It almost looked like uh, Grovdell was going to turn around and help a Hannah Klein. Really not at home up those hills as well. And that was a uh, hard work there for some of the Swedish team. God, they would have had a good day if Merif Barter had been able to start. You can see somewhere at Mengstab was the one struggling up the hill. Sarah Lati is right there as well in amongst those German athletes. But just as we look at Grovdell and Chan, this week, I've been thinking back to Yasmin Chan and her win in Munich. Um, it, was, it was a bit of a tactical masterpiece. So she basically just dropped, I say just, it's very hard to do, dropped one very fast 400 meters. 
and gapped the likes of Ailish McColgan of Cluster Health and, and, and got Gapped. herself <laughs> got herself that gold medal. And I then thought it was interesting when we came to the 5,000 metres uh, and Cluster Health and had nearly figured that out. She let Yasmin Chan make this big move and then she reeled her back in. She kept that belief uh, that Yasmin Chan sometimes puts these big moves in early on in a race. That I don't know whether it's a very interesting tactical move. It's almost soul destroying if you open up a gap uh, on a group and they think that's it, you're gone. And they don't always realize you're not going any faster than them. So uh, if I was you know, the likes of Teferi or Grovdale or Klosterhalf, and I'd be thinking, just keep an eye on her. She might put in a fast 200 metres. That doesn't mean she's having a better day. It just means she's trying to have a go and employ that tactic again. Talk about putting in fast sections. Grovdale taking that hill really well. Warner Judd there, slipping and sliding. This is the toughest section there. That's a, you're running a, a, taking a sharp left hand turn. There's a slight reverse camber. The ground's really slippery and getting more and more chopped up. But Grovdale there has a little glance at Chan, see what's going on. Chan with her arms flailing, just trying to keep on her feet there. I think it's a really awkward section, the second half of the downhill, the last section of the downhill. But these four beginning to get away. Warner Judd in fifth, going through there with Klein. Germans packing so well. It's a good run for Miriam Datka. She's taken a bronze here at a junior level. She was third at the German cross country, but she took at fourth place at the European Championships in Munich in the marathon with that massive sprint finish with Ninka Brinkman, uh, just fell out of the medals then. So it's a good kind of return recovery um, from an August marathon for Miriam Dapka to be here in the cross country. But Alina Ray was moving through really well. You can just see her swinging wide at the very end of this picture. She's starting to make up ground um, on Hannah Klein, on Miriam Dapka to get herself into the scoring places for that German team. So the German team, for me, are looking even better than they were a lap ago. They're moving through the field really well. Yeah, for an athlete of rate to not even be in the scoring trio for Germany says a great deal. She's in, what, 10th place, I think it was at the moment. And uh, Warner Judd back in fifth place. Top left of picture has just got to control things now. She mustn't panic. There'd be a the temptation would be to put in a surge and try and catch this re leading trio but she's got to try and se sort of spread her energies as best she can it's about managing your race very often when you lose ground on the leaders and Warner Judd can still threaten for a medal if any of the uh, athletes ahead of her but uh, found her but Chan looking impressive I'm intrigued to see how close to Halfen goes this middle section of the race Hannah because they head out now on this second of the four big laps she hasn't really shown her colours yet. She hasn't moved to the front at all. She's just tucked in there for the whole race. Well, last year in Dublin, we saw Constanza Klosterhalf and push on that pace. She was very aggressive at this stage um, and then ultimately faded down to fifth place. So I wonder how much Klosterhalf is, is remembering that from last year and saying, if I can be a bit more patient, uh, perhaps that will treat me well um, in the final two, three, four kilometres of this race. Carolina Gr but Kelly Grovdale was very conservative as well in Dublin. She let the other athletes you know, show their cards, do a little bit of a push, this, that and the other, and then move through at about this stage and started to push. You know, 12 months ago, it was only Merif Barter that could really go with Grovdale in those closing stages. She's got more company. Yasmin Chan is looking better than she did last year. and We'd expect that off her tremendous track season. Um, but I think Cluster Health, and if she should just try and stick with these, these athletes for, for, for another lap and a half or so and then see what's going on. I agree. Let them throw everything at you that they can, absorb it, and then uh, take stock of things with, say, a lap to go. Teferi, by the way, has lost a bit of ground. She was in fourth place. She's now been caught by uh, Warner Judd. And was it Tadatka of Germany, I think, there as well? Here's the leading trio. Grovdal now leaning into the hill. And Chan, we saw Chan really struggling on this hill the last time they came up it, the first time they were negotiating a major big lap. This is the second big lap of four, so a lot of racing to come. But Grovdal, nice and strong there, leaning into it. And look at Chan there. Oh, comes to a standstill almost. She's really not comfortable on these hills. Tells me that she, she knows she's got to make the most of the downhill, and in particular the flat section. You know, this is a fascinating course, because in the background there through the trees, you can see the flat field. So about half the course is dead flat. Half of it is this challenging uphill and downhill. And Chan is going to have to do a lot of hard running and try and stretch the others on the flats, I think. 
that camera angle is great as well. It gives you that elevation, a perspective on that elevation. Uh, you can see the flak section below and how far down it is. Quite how far our athletes are having to climb as they come up this hill. But Grovdale piling on the pressure. And that was a canny move off Costa Health. And she sensed that Yasmin Chan was starting to falter and just moved herself round the Turkish athlete right back on to the coattails of the Nor Norwegian athlete. Well, they come through now. Here is uh, Chan in third place. But the top three are of the very highest caliber. This is a superb battle building here. Although Chan has lost a lot of ground. She's lost 50 meters in the last two minutes. Now you are looking at the reigning European cross country champion just ahead of the reigning European 5,000 meter champion. And the current 10,000 meter champion is just a little bit further up the hill. I do think Yasmin Chan has slowed significantly on this hilly section. She looked all right on the flat, but we saw Grovdale look much more at home on the downhill section than Chan. And it's the same picture there. I do think Yasmin Chan could come under threat from that group behind it. Well, Grovdale has been preparing at an altitude in Flagstaff in the USA, in Arizona. But I really admire Grovdale because 32 years old now, she's had her fair share of injuries. She's worked really hard to claw her way into world class and she is very much world class performer. You think, look at her range, 15, uh, 403 for 1500. She's run 8.33 for 3,000, 14.31 for, for 5,000. She's very much a world-class performer. And a 68-minute half marathon. You know, she ticks all the boxes, Grovdahl, and she's a, she's a smart racer. She might not have a like-for-like um, -like ability on the track with, with um, the German, with Costa Halfen, but she's a great, she's a canny racer. What I love about Grovdahl, she needs to throw her, send her focus to something different every few months, you know, 913 steeplechase, but also be able to have that ability on, on the flat races is just tremendous. And to put it all together in cross country as well, um, she did say she loves cross country where you get those different athletes coming together. You're not worrying about splits. Uh, she loves the tradition of doing this European cross country championships every year. She sees it as a lovely mini focus. Then you move past this and then look ahead uh, to that track season. She's got the most individual medals of any female athlete. She has eight across all the different age groups, but it took her all those years to get that gold medal last year. And wouldn't it be wonderful if she, well, if she picks up another medal, that's tremendous. But a defense of that title would be amazing. Two big laps to go then. Grovdahl had a little glance over her shoulder just then to see, to take stock of things. She'll see Chan there, top of picture, is probably, ooh, 60 meters down now and has really struggled on the hill, the big hill, twice now that they've uh, negotiated it. Two more to come. Here's the chasing pack. And if uh, Chan is not careful, they're going to catch her because Ray and Warner Judd and others are, are racing hard. Teferi is back there as well. But uh, I can't see anybody getting up to terms with these two. Alina Ray, how has she done that? She must have been 30th uh, through those first two small laps. And she's managed somehow to get herself all the way up to fourth position. And I would not bet against Alina Ray. When, in terms of judging a race, she got that brilliant bronze as a senior in the 2018 European Championships in Berlin. Bronze in similar fashion in Dublin. And she looks like she might be doing something similar here today. She overhauled Constanza Klosterhaufen in the closing stages in Dublin. Constanza Klosterhaufen looks a bit more comfortable. She does look relaxed running alongside Grovdale as they work their way through this penultimate lap. That's the first time we have seen Klosterhaufen go to the lead. It is. You're dead right. Exactly the first time. And, what, two big laps to come. So you could almost say halfway, really, because the two fir first two small laps are so short. They're taking about three minutes each lap. But close to Helfen here, the first real test that Grovdal has had set to her. And I wonder if this will be telling. Let's see how each of them copes respectively with the little climbs. There are a couple of really nasty little inclines halfway up this hill. Grovdal has looked the stronger to me. Has the power. You can see she's much more powerfully set than is uh, close to Helfen. Close to Helfen has that great power to weight ratio. She's hardly got any weight to lift off the ground. It is interesting. I did think Grovdale looked better up the hills so far, certainly better down the hills. Uh, and I wonder if Costa Halfen could sense that. <laughs> Here goes Alina Ray on the charge yet again. This athlete 
just judges her races to perfection. Yasmin Chan really struggling up that hill. I'm delighted. Alina Ray has been very honest, similar to Sarah Healy in the under-23 race. Alina Ray DNF'd in Munich and confessed she's stomach problems brought on by stress that she'd put on herself. And she's had to really wrestle some demons. So I'm delighted to see Alina Ray back to performing her very best after a few months, uh, kind of struggling with pre-race nerves and pressure. That's something Costa Halfon will be familiar with as well. And she's doing very well, piling pressure on Grovdale at the moment. Yeah, this is a telling moment. Lap and a half to go. Costa Halfon testing the reigning champion. Alina Ray won the German cross country title recently. We know she's in really good form and uh, bronze medalist last year. She knows her way around the cross country circuit. Kloster Halfen, I'm less familiar with on the country, and I don't think she's had that many cross country races over the years, has she? I mean, I know she's, she ran well last year, but. She did, she did a lot as a junior. Costa Halfen, we saw her in these under 20 races. Um, I think she picked up a couple of goals as an under 20, but that's such a short distance. You know, that's 4K, and we knew she was a phenomenal um, 8 15 runner you know, at a very young age, sub 2 and sub 4. Um, but it has been a while, I think, since we were for her well, to under master Alberto this Salazar, distance. I don't think she did much cross country running, did she? We can, we can mention the name. Yeah, it? no, no, and I, I do think, you know. Constanza quite rightly really turned her attention to the roads and the track, sorry, the track and then and then the roads in the last few months. Um, and it does take some time to, to learn your trade on the cross country. You know, through all those years, uh, Carolina Bacelli Grovdale was turning up here year in, year out, and all that was a nervous look behind from Grovdale. Yeah. She's uh, really feeling the pressure here, I think, from the German athlete. One lap to go then, and Kloster Halfen has been applying the pressure for the last couple of minutes. And I think, Hannah, that uh, Grovdale is hanging on here. The, the brow is furrowed. She's not up alongside the German, letting her know she's feeling fine, which is what do you do if you're feeling good and somebody starts pushing? You just come and look on the side and say, is that the best you got? You know, a psychology, maybe give them a nudge with the elbow. But uh, I think uh, Grovdal in second place. And I'm, I'm a bit surprised that uh, Kloster Helfen hasn't had a little glance over her shoulder to see what's going on behind. And maybe to get a glance at the features of Grov del Rey has put in this fabulous search and Datka as well. Three Germans in four. Four Germans in six. Unbelievable. That is brilliant. I mean, Jess Warner Judd at the moment, the best of the Brits, but that German team score is going to be infinitesimal. And that's, I can think, Grov del is slightly got herself back towards Klosterhalfen. It does seem like Klosterhalfen is trying to drop Grovdale here. I, I still fancy Grovdale's chances on that downhill. I think she looked more comfortable um, and she looked more relaxed. So if Klosterhalfen is going to have to open up a gap um, for that downhill descent to be a winning, a winning kind of environment for her. Well, speaking of gaps, the gap behind that pair is massive. It's probably 150 metres, maybe more now. The last uh, couple of laps have been uh, 5.03 and 5.03. The first two laps up the big full lap. Then they've just done on the third lap a 4.57. So a significant acceleration. That was all down to Klosterhalven. And I get the impression the German there to the left, Hannah, is really letting rip now. This is the final circuit. They're going over this ground for the final time. Only the senior men's race to come. It's pretty chewed up. But Klosterhalven here is really putting it on. And... Uh, this next hill will be critical. Both of them are good at running on the downhill, but uh, how will they cope with this upslope? Eight and a half points for Germany at the moment. That is an obscene team score, and it does look like they'll hold it. Miriam Datka has got, a, got some athletes queuing up behind her, but Alina Ray, if she gets another bronze medal, and she's spoken about those emotional difficulties she's had in that competition environment in the last few months, I would be delighted for her. And, Marion Batka does falter at all. Hannah Klein will be there to pick up the pieces. But I put in my notes, you know, Carolina Grovdal, she has improved since last year. But has she improved as much as Constanza Klosterhalfen? And I think that's what we're going to find out. We've got around about three minutes, three and a half minutes maybe left of the race. This is that last big uphill push. You've got to go for broke. This is it now. Make your winning move. You've got to make your competitor hurt as much as you possibly can. Oh, a little stumble almost from Kloster Health and there pulls her sleeves up. I don't know if she's getting too warm. Certainly our commentary cabin here, the heating has gone up. Somebody's turned up the heater for some reason in the last half hour, so it's sweltering in here. It's like a sauna, and we're looking out at countryside where it's about one or two degrees. But uh, Grovdal up onto the shoulder 
of Kloster Halfen now. Again, she's just smoother, a little bit smoother on that upslope than Kloster Halfen. Everything to run here for now. I guess when you try and put them side by side on paper, Kloster Halfen is the quicker of the two. Quicker over 1,500, quicker over every distance. But uh, this is racing, and you can throw the, the form book aside in that respect. Oh, what a race we've got on our hands here. Constanza Klosterhaufen, Carolina Bakelli grovdale toe for toe as they come out of the indoor section. We think it's around about 470 metres from that point there. There's a school of thought for people that have looked at this course. If you come out of that building first, you are going to be first by the time you get to the finish line. But that really isn't what we've seen as these races have unfolded. Drama in the junior men's race. Nick Griggs just stumbling in the closing stages. Will Barnicut swinging right wide. Gaia Sabatini in the mix relay she took advantage of the final flat section what will happen between Constanza Klosterhaufen and Carolina Bekele Grovdale Klosterhaufen the track specialist she's got the foot speed but can you be strong enough to use it at the end of a testing eight kilometer cross-country course well Grovdale hits the front once again she's uh, returned the punches that have come at her from Klosterhaufen with interest and kicked hard here. Now, she's no slouch. We've got to remember, Hannah, she was eighth in the World Championships, 5,000 this summer, the Norwegian. She's had a fabulous year. At 32, she's going from strength to strength, and she's easing away from Klosterhelfen now. And barring disaster in this last 100 metres, it's going to be Norwegian gold. Carolina Bakelli Grovdal waited years for her first senior gold medal at these European Championships. That came in Dublin 12 months ago, and it is a brilliant defence of that title. A second gold medal to Norway, and Carolina Bakelli Grovdal, Constanza Klosterhaufen, with one of her best cross country performances of her life, picking up a silver medal. What a battle between those two women. Hats off, and may we see that for many years to come. Alina Ray is going to come under pressure for this bronze medal. It's been a valiant effort from the German athlete, paced supremely well. It would be heartbreaking to see her miss out. Her training partner, Hannah Klein, the 1500 meter specialist, is gathering behind. Miriam Datka, the marathon specialist, surely she hasn't got one more kick. Salah Moet Teferi of Israel does look like she might be lacking foot speed in these closing stages. Alina Ray, high stepping, kicking hard. She was the German cross country champion by quite some margin and she is going to hold off her 1500 meter teammate. Or is she? They're toe for toe at the line. Maybe, maybe Hannah Klein just <laughs> ahead of Alina Ray. They, I, I don't think that's a confirmed result there on our screen. From the naked eye, we're just at the commentary position. I, I perhaps think Hannah Klein might have nicked it at the last minute. We'll see. Well, that looks pretty conclusive when it comes up in third and fourth. But you promise. And it's about their, <laughs> it's about their chips, isn't it? They are chipped. They are chipped. But what about the chest? Are the chips on the chest or are the chips around their ankle today? I think they're in there. I can't see any ankle anklets flying around down there. Probably in the actual numbers and their bib numbers. Yeah. So Alina Ray, I think it changed her coaching setup this year and has moved to train with Hannah Klein in Tübingen. Um, so for those two, they probably run every step together this autumn. So that's very ironic for them to cross the finish line almost together.